Welcome back everybody. Today we're going to be playing with some FBS fine line tape and some rattle cans. We're going to make some cool designs. Let's get to it. <laughs> So we're going to start off here with some 180 grit on my DA. I really like the Norton Dry Ice series of uh, sandpaper from 40 grit up to 1000. Same stuff I use at work and I like to buy it for at home as well. Next we're just going to give everything a quick blow off with the air compressor to get rid of any excess dust. And a quick wipe down with acetone to get rid of anything left on there. It is a good idea to um, use either this or some wax and grease remover, something along those lines. And we're just gonna cut some paper for the back side of the panel here. I'll explain, if you guys want to stick around to the, uh, the end of the video, I'll just explain what this is actually for. I'm just having some fun on the back side of this panel. carefully masked about a quarter inch border around the whole thing that I don't want any paint on and we'll just flip it over here wrap that masking paper around and we'll wrap it over that masking paper reason I'm being very careful here is it's because actually the back side of the panel so not the side we're painting right now the back side is the important part of uh, this piece but uh, I just want to make the back side of it look all fancy So I'm ready to spray here. I'm just gonna be spraying some self etching primer from Rust-Oleum. Uh, I am mix matching a bunch of different products for this. Got Rust Check for my matte black and Duke Color Engine Enamel for my green. It's not ideal, but this is going on a car. It's not gonna be exposed to any elements, so we're not too concerned about that. Uh, one thing to remember, always wear a respirator. I'm just gonna be wearing my charcoal filters. Unfortunately, it's a little too cold to have my garage door open, so we'll just be spraying with it closed today. I'm gonna walk out as soon as I've done my spraying. Uh, keep in mind, if you're spraying a two-part uh, paint or clear primer, whatever, charcoal filters won't filter out all the isocyanates. They will filter out your VOCs, volatile organic compounds, but it won't filter out all the isos, so just something to keep in mind. All right, let's spray. See, we've dried off to a really nice uniform surface. Time to throw on some paint. And look at that dumb dumb not wearing safety glasses. While rattle cans don't contain, well at least single part rattle cans don't contain any isocyanates, it's still good to wear safety glasses. It just keeps any of that overspray from getting in your eyes. Goggles are even better. Fresh air mask, best. But uh, again, in everyone's garages, I doubt anyone's gonna be using a fresh air hood for this kind of work. So yeah, don't be dumb guys, like that guy in the video. Put some safety glasses on. You can see here that I'm just touching the masking paper right next to where I was spraying. So I got a full coat of paint on that masking paper there. This is gonna let me check to see if it has flashed off enough. If you go ahead and touch your panel instead of the masking tape paper next to it, there's a chance that you might just damage your paint. Uh, if it's still too wet, you can put a big fingerprint on it and then you can deal with way more issues than just touching the masking paper on the side. So that's a neat little trick. Hopefully it helps you out.
the next day. Our panel is dry. We've got a uniform finish. There are a few little dust nibs in there, and it's not actually dust. That was uh, some little chunks. Uh, you can kind of see here uh, little chunks that were sort of shooting out of the uh, spray can, despite keeping it warm, keeping the tip clean, purging after every spray. So nothing I can do too much about that. In this case, I'm just playing with rattle cans. I'm not too concerned about the overall finish. Just having some fun. I'm gonna get into some fine line here. I've got my FBS tape. I got 1 16th and quarter inch. Let's have some fun. So you can see I'm taking some measurements here. Uh, that again pertains to the front side of the panel. We are painting the back side. Um, and I'll explain at the end of the video why I'm doing this. Um, so yeah, we're just uh, going along. You can see I marked a center line with my 1 16th fine line just to uh, have as a reference point. Overall, this masking took me almost three hours. Uh, getting the first side was easy, and then just matching the other side took a lot of eyeballing, trying to figure it out. And I wasn't going off any kind of predetermined design or anything like that, just, was just having some fun, making some interesting shapes. You can see as I go, I like to cut the end of the tape with a razor instead of just pulling it because when you pull it, it does stretch it out and then that last inch or two that you stretch isn't gonna be usable, so you're gonna trim it off anyway. So I like to just get it close, trim that end off, and then you can continue along with your next piece. If you're stretching it to break it at the tail end of uh, one of your pieces as well, you have a larger chance of accidentally pulling it off and ruining all your hard work. So just cut it with a razor blade makes it easier and then I use an exacto knife or uh, one of those square razor blades that you see there just to trim my ends off and keep my edges nice and crisp. Been wiped down, blown off, We're ready to spray. So I have coverage over my panel now. There isn't any trace of green left. However, I'm gonna do one more coat uh, with the panel vertical like this, just to get rid of some of the splotchiness. It's kind of tough to get a consistent finish with the rattle can on a bigger panel in a flat finish. So we're just gonna hit it one more time at the uh, different angle, cross hatching it. And we'll see what happens. So I like to unmask while everything's still a little bit fresh. So everything, as you can see, is dry to the touch, but it's not completely cured. Uh, just spent about five minutes letting it flash off there. So we're gonna take off the masking tape right now while everything's still a little bit soft. I'm gonna keep my mask on. There's still some fumes floating around in here and it's snowing outside, so I can't open the doors. Let's unmask this guy and see how it looks. For peeling off my fine line here, I like to use an X-Acto knife with a uh, 
nice tip on it to just get under the edge of the fine line and then I use the pressure of my finger against the blade just to lift everything off as you can see. Once it's far enough that I'm not going to touch my panel, then I'll just grab it with two fingers and pull it away. For my first time playing with fine line, doing something like this, I'm ridiculously happy with how this turned out, especially with it just being rattle cans and in my garage. I am super happy with that. If you guys have any tips or tricks for me, please let me know in the comments. I'm more than willing to open my ears up and do some more learning because this is just, it's fun. I want to get into more of this stuff. You guys have a great day. Thanks for watching. If you guys like what you saw, please subscribe. We'll see you next time. Thanks to those of you who stuck around to see what this panel actually is, if you are curious. So I'm an auto body painter by trade. This is called the letdown panel. So when you're painting a tri-stage pearl, in this case it's GM's 800J uh, is the paint coat. Uh, the way it works with the tri-stage pearl is you have your ground coat, your base coat, which is just a solid color. Uh, in this case, it's a white. And then each mid coat is a translucent color or like a translucent base coat with a little bit of pearl mixed in. So every coat that you add darkens the color a little bit. So let's see if I can hope you guys can see that on camera. As you can see, as we go up the panel there, it gets a little bit darker, the top being the darkest. So in this case, I have just, uh, just the ground coat here. So that's just solid white. And then one coat of uh, mid coat, one coat of pearl, two coats of pearl, three coats of pearl, four coats of pearl. And on the back side of this panel that we painted, as you can see, I've got some information written down. I've just written down, so uh, I got my ground coat, uh, mid coat, uh, sorry, one mid coat, two mid coat, three mid coat, four mid coat, and then uh, you can see I've also got it cleared on one side and not cleared on the other side, also written down here. And then I have all the products I use: the primer, the ground coat, uh, mid coat, and the clear coat, as well as which gun I use, the relative humidity that day, because all these things will factor into the color and can change it, as well as like the pressure I've sprayed at, the distance I sprayed it at, whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so this allows me to get into the booth and actually match the paint color to the vehicle I'm painting. So with this side, the glossy side, I can match the color to the car itself, the customer's car that comes in. And then with the non-painted or non-clear coated side, I can use that in the booth to make sure that my uncleared part, uh, while I'm still adding the color to it, is the correct color and will match the correct color once I clear coat it. Thanks again for listening, guys. Have a great day.